if you're wondering why Dave Rubin is soy facing here, it's because he is very excited that Italy has elected their first fascist since Benito Mussolini. So this individual who is gay in a gay relationship, who happens to be Jewish, he is ecstatic that fascism has returned to Italy. Yeah, hashtag girl boss Mussolini. <laughs> Take it away. Well, I love it. It's just so good. She's the telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I didn't pre-watch this, so I had no idea that he would be doing an Italian accent. I'm so sorry that you all had to hear that. I'm so sorry. That was not okay. This is why I need to pre-watch every single video, because you never know when you're going to be ambushed with, like, this level of cringe. That was really, really bad. That was so bad. Do you get it? You get it? So here is a Western democracy. Now, a lot of this stuff has been happening in some of the Eastern countries in Europe, Eastern European countries, but here's a Western European democracy that has had enough of the wokeness. It has had enough of collective. I don't understand how Dave Rubin, his whole worldview is people voting based on wokeness or anti-wokeness. And so if a Republican or a conservative or a Christian nationalist or a fascist comes to power, it's exclusively because of everyone being fed up with wokeness. And if a liberal or a socialist or a leftist comes to power, it's specifically because they're embracing wokeness. Like that's literally the totality of his binary worldview. This is a political commentator and he reduces everything down to wokeness. I mean, how are you a political commentator when that is your worldview? You simplify the world to just wokeness. Oh, well, you see, Italy decided to opt for fascism again because they're fed up with wokeness. Don't you think there's like more factors to it? Don't you think that the center left, more neoliberal party, the establishment in Italy has not been very popular? They didn't effectively campaign. And then there is a lot of economic issues going on in Italy. Therefore, the far right decided to capitalize on those issues with populist rhetoric. It's a lot more complicated. The world is not black and white, but for Dave Rubin, it really is black and white, and it just comes down to um, woke and not woke. That's a really dumb way <laughs> to view the world, and I was going to say something much more mean, but I'm going to try to restrain myself here. It has had enough of people being defined by their gender or their other immutable characteristics. It, it's had enough of you saying that your kids are born boys, but they're actually girls. The assault on religion, the assault on all of our institutions. Okay, he's leaving out one really huge thing here. Um, the Italian fascists, the Brothers of Italy party, they're also really angry about this, uh, the assault on traditional values, the assault on marriage. Um, they're not too happy about homos like Dave Rubin. And... Um, for that reason, LGBTQ Italians on alert as right-wing alliance triumphs in election. Nationalist leader Georgia Maloney, who is set to become Italy's first female premier, hashtag fascist girl boss, has denounced what she calls gender ideology and the LGBT lobby. So this absolute dumb fuck right here is celebrating this fascist's victory while actual LGBTQ people in Italy are saying, oh my god. The triumph of a right-wing alliance in Italy's election has raised concern among LGBTQ advocates who fear nationalist leader Georgia Maloney could adopt anti-gay policies as prime minister and set back their efforts to boost equality. Maloney, who is set to become Italy's first woman premier, hashtag fascist girl boss, at the head of its most right-wing government since World War II, fiercely denounced what she calls gender ideology and the LGBT lobby just months before Sunday's vote. But she also has played down her party's post-fascist roots and portrays it as a mainstream group like Britain's conservative, sure. Uh, so what would her leadership of Italy's new government mean for the LGBTQ community? Well, she's a Christian and she has sprinkled speeches with anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and conservative statements on family-related issues. Yes to natural families, no to the LGBT lobby. Yes to sexual identity, no to gender ideology. Yes to the culture of life, no to the abyss of death. But in the past few weeks, Maloney has repeatedly denied suggestions, suggestions she might roll back legislation on abortion or LGBTQ rights while reaffirming her opposition to adoptions and surrogacy for same-sex couples. So keep that in mind here. Dave Rubin, 
he's going to become a gay parent. In fact, I think he might already be a gay parent. Like, he might have one of the two children that he uh, is supposed to have via a surrogate. If she were his prime minister, he wouldn't be able to have kids. She would ban Dave Rubin from being a father because he's gay. Days before the election, however, a senior member of her Brothers of Italy group suggested same-sex parenting was not normal. So this absolute buffoon is celebrating the return of fascism to Italy. Meanwhile, they think that people like him are unnatural. That's literally what they say. And he's totally ecstatic, ecstatic about it because it doesn't affect him. It, this is a phenomenal speech. So, of course, everyone in uh, the Western media is calling her a fascist and, and even... This is a party that directly descended from Mussolini. The prime minister praised Benito Mussolini. To say that she's not a fascist is genuinely stupid. If you look up the tenets of fascism, the core tenets of fascism, you will see they check most of the boxes, as do Republicans in the United States. Okay, so you guys get the game, right? We've, we've looked past, we've moved the curtain, and we're looking past, and it's not the all-powerful Oz, it's just some washed-up old dude back there, and that game is that they try to scare the hell, of, hell out of you until you pull that curtain back. She's far right, she's a fascist, blah, blah, blah. Well, I listened to all the speeches, I did a little research, research on her, I've talked to a couple people. What, what would that mean, that she's a far right fascist? So she's a far right fascist. So she hates immigrants or something like that? No, she actually wants borders. We had an orange man who wanted borders and they said he was a fascist. And he was a fascist. And just saying that they want borders is an oversimplification. What she wants, is effectively what all the fascists around the globe currently want. She's about Italian first policies, meaning they want to exclude immigrants. They fearmonger tacitly and overtly about the great replacement conspiracy with immigrants. He knows what he's doing here. He's oversimplifying it because he knows that he's doing apologia for fascists. But I'd be interested to know that if they do ban gay adoption and surrogacy in Italy, how is he going to, you know, talk about that? How is he going to frame it? Is he going to say, oh, well, they just rejected the woke. Really, Dave? Is that how you're going to say it? I mean, I'd, I'd love to see what he has to say. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But if it did, then Dave Rubin would, of course, be right there to legitimize it. He'd say, well, look, as a gay man, you know, we have certain freedoms in this country and that's just their country. That's, you know, that's their right. That's what he would do because this is an individual who became popular because he used his identity as a gay man to shield conservatives from claims of homophobia. Um, what, what is a fascist? Well, a fascist, of course, is someone who wants corporate power to be completely aligned with political power. But that's the reverse of what she was saying in that speech. What she was saying in that speech is, it's up to you, it's your life. You shouldn't become just the ultimate consumer of all of the things that the monster, that the big government corporate monster wants you to be, right? Uh, it, the, what is fascism? It wields the state's political power on all private and public institutions, right? That's what it does. She's trying to separate those things. But the media is showing you the cards and the cards are she is a far right fascist. They never tell you what actually that means. It just sounds scary enough. My God, Mussolini, Hitler, somebody do something. I mean, first of all, this is a party that again descended from Mussolini. It has fascist roots. But on top of that, he just said that, oh, fascists want to wield power over private and public institutions. What the fuck do you think all this, you know, virtue signaling about the traditional family is? They're trying to wield power over your private life. And you don't have to wonder what fascism is. You can literally just look it up. So these are the 14 characteristics, uh, common features of fascism by Umberto Eco. So this includes the cult of tradition, the number one thing that the Brothers of Italy party was running on, uh, the rejection of modernism. Modernism includes many things, but it especially means that these modern new woke values that societies are adopting, that's unacceptable. It's kind of in line with tradition. Uh, the cult of action for action's sake. Disagreement is treason. We see hypernationalism. Fear of difference. Appeal to social frustration, which is absolutely what we're seeing. You see this pseudo populist rhetoric will be where uh, they'll make overtones to, you know, economic policies that are needed. Uh, but in actuality, they don't usually deliver when it comes to the economy. They just crack down and they consolidate power. The obsession with the plot. 
We see that everywhere. Globalism, you know, the, these different boogeymans, the woke agenda, the enemy is both strong and weak. We see that here in the United States. I can't speak to Italy, but we're often told that the left, they're a bunch of hypersensitive, overly PC snowflakes, but at the same time, they're really scary and they're Antifa and they're burning down cities, yada, yada. So you see this contradiction in all forms of fascism, essentially. Pacifism is trafficking with the enemy, contempt for the weak. Everybody is educated to become a hero, machismo and weaponry, selective politics populism again what i talked about here uh and yeah uh, your fascism speaks newspeak all the nazi or uh, nazi or fascist school books made use of an impoverished vocabulary and an elementary syntax in order to limit the instruments for complex and critical reasoning so it's not that difficult if you're wondering is somebody fascist or not is a party fascist or not all you have to do is know what fascism is and a lot of people I think that part of it is cognitive dissonance. They don't want to admit that fascism has returned and is extremely popular. And we're seeing the rise of a global fascist movement. And there is solidarity among fascists, by the way. Uh, people don't want to admit that, right? Because that's really scary. But the fact is, fascism is here. And Italy is just another country that is going in the same trend that we've seen other countries head in. The United States, Brazil, Hungary, India. It's not uncommon anymore some states have resisted uh but what you need to push back against fascism is a strong pro-worker party strong pro-worker candidates so what we're seeing in brazil is lula da silva he is currently beating jair bolsonaro when it comes to the polls and he is most likely going to win but the problem is that once fascism takes hold in your country it becomes very difficult to root out fascism because now what Jair Bolsonaro is saying is, oh, well, you know, the only way I can lose is if there's fraud. So he's planning a Trump-style January 6th coup. And the difference between Brazil and the United States is that the military there, they're loyal with Jair Bolsonaro. He has his grip with them. Whereas in the United States, you know, it's a little bit different culturally. The military here is very conservative disproportionately, but... Uh, overall, the military isn't intertwined as much with the president. You know, even though the president is commander in chief here, the institutions here are different. There's some degree of separation, for lack of a better word here. Uh, but, you know, this dipshit here is very excited about this, very excited about fascism returning to Italy. Even if, you know, um, they got their way, people like Dave Rubin would not be able to have families. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.